it was rough. Before I get started, my son now is happy, he's healthy, he's thriving, but it's been a long road. I gotta say it for anyone who's new, my name's MJ, I'm a trans man, I have a biological son, that's him and I when he was first born. My son was premature, but he was just like on the cusp of not being premature. They claim that the issues we were having uh, was because he had preemie issues. Uh, really, it's because um, I developed, I think it's called a choreo infection, because uh, they didn't believe me that I was in labor because I was in no pain at all. Um, and then it passed on to my son, so he had to fight off an infection. I had to fight off an infection. Look at the baby wrinkles. I can't stand it. <laughs> So literally from day one, um, my son, he had this issue where he would choke on like uh, formula, breast milk, it didn't matter. Um, he would choke on any liquids he tried to consume. And of course it was terrifying, like I'd be ready to call the paramedics all the time, I was trying to get in touch with specialists, and finally I found people that would come to the house and evaluate him. And they blamed me. They told me that the reason he was choking was because of the way I was positioning him while feeding him. Genetic testing and x-rays would show <laughs> it wasn't my fault. Uh, my son was born with something called hypotonia. He had low muscle tone, mainly in his jaw, and this affected him swallowing liquids and he would end up aspirating. This is why up until recently, you've seen me have to like, uh, you know, thicken my son's drinks all the time. You know, even like a decade later, um, he just got the okay to not have, um, you know, thickener in his drinks all the time now. So my son was also born with something called lateral qualis. It's similar to what's more commonly diagnosed, which is torticollis, um, except his head was literally to one position, and uh, he, he could move his head forward, but it was, it was a struggle. It was painful for him. Uh, he could not uh, move his head to the opposite side. Because of this, he ended up developing plagiocephaly. Plagiocephaly is, as you can see here, like the side of his head is flat on one side. Literally from his neck to his head, there was no like, there was no definition. It was all flat. So we ended up getting him like evaluated for that. And um, once again, ran into some really unprofessional specialists. He had a fantastic orthopedic surgeon. He didn't need surgery, but that's who he got um, his orthopedic helmet through. But I didn't know if I wanted him to have an orthopedic helmet because if it was just cosmetic, I didn't know if I wanted to have my infant in a helmet for 23 hours a day during the summer. One of the specialists said to me, Well, you don't want him to be that kid on the playground everyone's pointing and laughing at, do you? Anyways, um, the surgeon ended up talking me into getting the helmet because it's not just cosmetic. He also would have had to go through, like, getting custom bike helmets, custom, like, glasses, and I didn't want my son to have to go through that. I got more. I'm gonna have to make a part two. I don't even got time. <laughs> but I'm just gonna say quickly, if you have a kid who's going through these things, feel free to reach out. Um, sometimes it takes me a while to answer my DMs, but I always answer them. Okay, so like I said in the last video, my son now, he is happy, healthy, thriving. He is nine years old. I honestly don't talk about uh, this part of our journey a lot because I started like social media when he was older. But I know a lot of other parents struggle with uh, some of these things that we've dealt with, some of these medical issues. So why not talk about it? Maybe it'll help someone. So in the last video, I talked about my son's uh, lateral colis, plagiocephaly, dysphagia, hypotonia. Now we're going to move on to before he got his autism diagnosis. Honestly, nobody thought that my kid was autistic. The doctors didn't think so. We didn't think so. Not that I knew anything about autism anyways, to be honest. Everybody thought he was deaf. And well, that's because he failed a hearing exam uh, just on one ear. So we thought he couldn't hear out of one ear and that's what was like affecting his communication skills and his ability to react to certain things. Because of that, he had to have a sedated ABR and that actually ruled out any hearing loss. That's when they told me they thought that it was probably behavioral, um, and that is why we ended up getting him evaluated and he got a diagnosis of autism. Shortly after that, he had to get an MRI. Um, my son, because he has hypotonia, uh, not only is he hyperflexible, uh, but he tends to kind of fall a lot, and when he does, he has broken bones. My son is only nine years old, and he's broken his elbow and, like, this little bone in his foot. I was actually terrified when he first broke a bone because I was like so scared that they would think that like I did something. I already get looks because of how I look. Even before I transitioned, I had a lot of tattoos. People don't always take kindly to that. But surprisingly, the doctor was so understanding and he was like, no, we actually see this a lot in autistic kids, especially with hypotonia. They have hyperflexibility. So their arms and legs are sometimes in positions that maybe don't make sense to us, but it makes sense for their bodies. 
But yeah, he had to have a cast on. I have pictures, but he's older in them, so I don't want to share them. I try not to share photos of my son when he's, like, close to his age now, just to be safe. And then he was at his dad's house, and he went on a camping trip, and he broke a bone in his foot. And I inquired, I'm like, are you sure that this was, you know, due to, like, something like, you know, an accident? And they said, yeah, this is not foul play at all. But I cannot tell you the anxiety that goes along with having a kid who, like, breaks bones easily, especially when you look like this. I just, it's scary. My son also had to have a sleep study done um, when he was younger because he does not sleep well. They found he had sleep apnea. Because of that, he ended up having surgery, having his uh, adenoids removed, hoping that that would help. Um, unfortunately, it didn't, but we tried. He also had to get a biopsy, an esophageal biopsy, I believe it's called, uh, to ensure that his swallowing issues were due to the hypotonia and not another medical concern. He's been through a lot, but he's happy as shit. I got a good kid. Seven years ago, I tattooed my own throat. Obviously, not recommended. It obviously doesn't come out as good. It's unsafe, so you shouldn't do it. Do I regret it? No. Am I going to take you up on your offer if you're a tattoo artist saying, I'll fix it for you, it'll look great? No, no thank you. I pleasantly declined. When I made the decision to tattoo my throat, I hadn't even transitioned yet. As I said, it was seven years ago. Now, what makes this interesting is I'm one of those people, like, I actually do have OCD, I'm diagnosed, like, I'm worried all the time, I'm a little bit of a hypochondriac, they call it health anxiety now, you know, I always am afraid of dying, having a heart attack, an allergic reaction, constantly, okay, that's what makes this story, like, nuts. So this is, like, a couple days before I decided to tattoo my throat, um, I was presenting as a masculine lesbian, I pretty much look the same as I do now, only I was a lot younger. So like I said, I live in a rural area. I love my community and everything, but uh, they're not always or haven't always been LGBT friendly. I used to get hassled all the time, all the time, going to the Dollar Tree, the gas station. Like, And I'm not stupid. I know the reason that I don't get hassled as much now is because you recognize me from TikTok. It really doesn't have a whole lot to do with things improving and changing. I mean, it's improved a little bit, but... I know why I don't get as much shit now, I know. Anyways, and I know people are gonna be like, that's transphobic! For me to even say this, I, I really don't give a shit. One day, I had just had it, okay? I had just had it. I was so pissed that I couldn't even do, like, everyday things as a parent without getting shit on by someone, without somebody giving me weird looks. Like, I just, I wanted to go one day without feeling like I was constantly on the defense. Just, I remember, like, at the time, my uh, town had, like, a different uh, trash collection company. And I remember looking outside my window. I had cardboard boxes that needed to be picked up. We didn't have recycling yet. It wasn't a thing here yet. And there were these dudes outside, okay, of my house, crying and screaming and huffing and puffing because they had to discard fucking empty cardboard. And I remember looking out that window and saying to myself, damn, God just be giving anyone a dick, huh? <laughs> I literally got a tattoo, and I just tattooed King right across my throat. I was just mad at life. I was mad at just everything. I remember being so freaked out because I could literally see my carotid artery like beating as I was like tattooing it. It didn't hurt. It was just creepy. I put some saran wrap on that bitch and went and got myself an ice cream cone. That's what I did. I'm running out of time, but what's even more badass about this? When I detransitioned, I still rocked that shit. I absolutely love my neck tattoo and I'll never ever change it. Except make it darker, which I do on a regular basis. <laughs> you guys, so last night, right, um, I woke up in the middle of the night and like I feel something like, like scratching my ass. And I like realized my husband's scratching my ass. And I moved his hand. I'm like, can you not scratch my ass? And he was like in his sleep. He says, I'm sorry. It's just my ass is so itchy. And I'm like, but you're scratching my ass. This is mine. This is my ass you're scratching. And he's like, close enough. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm coming to you with another uh, fever dream-like correspondence through text between my son and I. So first I ask him, did you have a good day at school? He says, no. Tomorrow is Remix Pie Day. Eli working in Eli is workshop. Sometimes if I word it like this, he'll give me more detail. So I said school was not good because Pi Remix Foe, period. I said, what does Pi Remix Foe mean? He says, correct. So I must be in one of his quiz, his game shows, you know. I said, am I in a quiz? He says, no. I said, what's going on then? He said, 
better. I said, so I am in a quiz then. And this dude says to me, nope, just be patient. I said, okay, I'm waiting. Then I said, I am your mom though, so you should know I'm not a patient person, right? I'm, I'm not, I can't even really keep surprises. He then says, in nine, 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 years, minutes, seconds. I said, I'll pick seconds. He says, how about a lot of nines from years and minutes from? I said, nine's a good number. He said, called 999. I said, exactly. He said, yes, I did too. See, now we get each other. Now we're on the same page. Then later on, I forget why, but I thought he wanted McDonald's. So I said, are you saying you want McDonald's? He said, yes. And I said, what do you want from McDonald's? Now, my son does this accent sometimes. I can't explain it, but I'll try to produce it in the best form possible. I will have McNugget and French fries. And I laugh because it's funny. Do not forget a Tory, like a robot voice. I said, you're funny. Then he sent me like 90 voice messages. <laughs> so I'm bipolar and I have bipolar one, which means like uh, I'm more prone to like psychosis during manic episodes and such. I'm on lithium treatment, which for me, it's been like a godsend. It works amazing. Like it's just, it's brilliant for me. Like it's just been wonderful. But just in case like I need a med adjustment or anything like that, like I'm always very vocal to my loved ones, uh, to my clinical care team, of course, you know, of signs to look out for uh, when I'm getting manic or when I might be facing like, you know, um, symptoms of psychosis, just so they know, just so we're on the same page and they can look out for me as well. I also check in a lot with myself, like, you know, just to kind of stay centered. And um, this is one of my <laughs> most favorite times that I had to like check in with myself and uh, find out if what I was seeing and experiencing was actually real. So this is before I transitioned um, and I was standing in line for ice cream. Yes, I get ice cream a lot. Uh, we live next to a homemade ice cream place. It is so good. But anyways, I'm in line and um, in front of me is this uh, little girl. And um, I guess she was trying to prevent this other kid from cutting in front of her in line rightfully so um and she kept saying i'm gonna fart i'm gonna do it i'm gonna fart and so the kid's like grossed out and he's like i don't want none of that so he's like you know moving to the back of the line because he doesn't want to be in the bubble of stink you know what i mean and i remember seeing that and i'm like oh my god that is so hilarious that is so funny that is like something i would do as a kid that is hilarious <laughs> so i put in my order and it's my turn to you know wait for my ice cream and so i'm standing in the little waiting area near the window and there was this older couple um you know next to me they were they were probably like in their like 80s maybe even 90s um and um i heard the woman talk about how she really wanted to get a tub of the maple ice cream because the place was going to close for the season soon and the husband was like but you already spent three hundred dollars on pistachio <laughs> Which I'm like, I can't, I can't even picture three hundred dollars worth of pistachio ice cream in my head. Like that's a lot of fucking ice cream. But then I just my jaw like dropped and I had to step back for a minute and ask myself like, am I am I in a time warp? Did I just see myself as a little kid and then as an old lady? And then. <laughs> Like, obviously, I, I had to, like, go, I'm like, no, okay, no, this is real life, definitely real life, you know, I did my whole check-in, no, it was real life, I was not actually in a time warp seeing myself as a kid, and then an old lady buying, uh, $300 worth of, um, maple ice cream. You guys, my family, we're getting recognized, like, five times a day now, I mean, I'm used to getting recognized, like, uh, maybe, like, one or two times a day, maybe three, if, like, I have a viral video, but, like, it's... It's nuts. We're getting recognized all the time. But honestly, everybody is so nice. Um, and I don't mind if people come up and say hi. Like, people are just very kind, respectful. Like, 99.999% of the time, everyone is fantastic. And I'm so grateful. But listen, okay? Um, this is a me problem. I'm totally aware of that. Like, when I am out in public now, I feel like all eyes are on us. Because uh, imagine if the people that come and say hi to us, imagine the people that recognize us that don't say hi to us. Imagine imagine how many people really know who we are. And um, so, like, last night, I'm like, oh, damn. I gotta like keep up appearances a little bit and I was like feeling a little bit insecure like because uh, uh, My son for instance, you know, he has very long hair. He doesn't want to cut his hair I'm not gonna make him um, so sometimes his hair's in his face, you know, it's all over the place like uh, his coat He always has hanging off his arms all that and I'm like, oh my god And I was a little bit like insecure like people are looking at us like what if they think my kid is unkept? What if they think this what if they think that and um, I literally was about to like buy him a new coat and like thinking How can I how can I fix his hair? I'm like trying to like finger brush his hair. You know what I mean? Um, and then I realized, fuck that shit. Fuck that shit. Because that's not how I got here. I got here being me. And that's why people recognize me. 
And that's why they love me. And if they don't, then they're not my type of people. But with that being said, I do have to say, because I'm not going to change for anyone, um, if you see me in person, you're probably local to me, I would assume. Um, that means you're going to see me like at the gas station, possibly picking wedgies in the parking lot. When I'm out with my kid, um, he's likely going to be doing his stim where he goes like this. Ah! And he itches his head like this. Um, we don't have lice. He's just happy. Good deal. You might run into us on a funny moment where my kid's like calling me an egghead in the parking lot. Or you might run into me with a bad everyday normal parenting moment where I'm telling my kid to buckle his fucking seatbelt so we can get the fuck on with our day. You might see me and my family, you know, out at a store shopping and my kids like screaming really loud, um, stimming, um, you're telling me you don't want to scream externally like you do internally sometimes, I mean, it's our life, he just expresses it. You might catch us on a good day where like my kids listening and behaving another day, he might be doing parkour off of store furniture, um, depends on the weather literally if we are in the ketchup section of the store and you hear me tell my son that putting it on mac and cheese is illegal please just keep it moving most of all yeah i know i'm shorter in real life do you see who i'm standing next to i have a husband that looks like a bike so our power went out in the middle of me baking on a live earlier and my kid he didn't like this so first the power goes out right and all of a sudden i hear holy moly he said where's the color I'm like, it's okay, we just lost power, it'll be back on soon. He's like, our house is broken, <laughs> fix it. I'm like, it doesn't work like that, I can't just put the power back on, but our house isn't broken, everything's fine, it'll be on soon. Buy a new house, go find a new house. Well, like, we can't just go out, that's not how we're, you don't go out in a storm and find a new house. Just cause your power is out, our house is fine, it'll be back on soon. In how many minutes? <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, um, they're gonna regret having those, uh, power restoration estimates, uh, when they realize how specific my kid is. Fortunately for them, my cell service was down, so he couldn't see any, like, estimates anyways. He could hear the wind, though, and, like, I don't blame him, because I was kind of nervous low-key about the wind, too. He's like, is that extreme weather? I'm like, yes, that's extreme weather. <laughs> After a while, he ended up uh, kind of getting over it. He went and got his uh, magna doodle and did math problems until the power went back on. But then, oh my god, today I spent time making a Sicilian love cake, okay? A hazelnut pumpkin pie, a creamy peanut butter Oreo pie, um, and an apple pie. And my dog ate the entire hazelnut pumpkin pie. That was the one I wasn't finished with when the power went off and she got it right off the stove. She's like 5'10". So I'm one pie down, but crisis averted. Power is back on. One crisis averted. My kid's calm now, so.